26 year old kid saying, if I don't make it this year, I have to retire because I've been in the business for 10 years. Yeah! This is not over! Hey guys, welcome back to 5 Minute Docs. Thanks for being here. Today uh, is kind of a special uh, video for me. I'm not really sure how to start this one either. Um, how do I want to start this? My love for filmmaking, cinematography, writing started with wrestling. Uh, that's kind of a weird thing to say and a weird thing to think about, but it did. Wrestling is such a massive part of who I am. Growing up in a cul-de-sac with two other guys and my brother, um, we would make wrestling videos. We would wrestle in, they had a, a split level house. And so the third level was kind of a basement with a, with a bonus room that we would set up mattresses and chairs and make this makeshift wrestling ring and wrestle. We'd come up with our characters. We had a camera, so we would do, you know, like promo videos and behind the scenes stuff. We were big into WWE at the time. The Attitude Era of WWE had just launched. We, and then I and my brother were big into WCW with, with the NWO and the NWO Black, and NWO Red. And then obviously you have The Rock and Stone Cold in WWE. And it was just this awesome time of Attitude. We were playing WWF and WCW on the Nintendo. We were just living and breathing wrestling. We came up with our characters. We came up with our storylines, who's gonna win the match, who's gonna lose the match, tag team, tag team partners, betrayals. We would basically film our own makeshift uh, WWE Monday Night Raw, or you know, for me, WW, or WCW Monday Night Nitro. It was like the best time for wrestling and it was such a big part of our lives and so much about filmmaking, I, I kind of learned in a way from doing that. So fast forward to about two and a half years ago, there's a local wrestling circuit and they're putting on a show at a friend of ours brewery. And I told my wife, I was like, hey, like it's probably not gonna be any good, but it's gonna be hilarious and it's gonna be entertaining. We'll be, we will be supporting Will in the brewery. So let's go, let's have some fun, let's have a few drinks. And I fell in love with it. The show was, Incredible. It's a great show. It's still going on today. It was so much better than I thought it was because it was actually really good and really well produced. And there was one wrestler that really stood out to me, Patrick Scott. He was a heel. A heel means a bad guy. But Patrick Scott was a heel and the entire crowd, there was probably 250 people there, hated him. And he was so good at getting that pop and getting people to, to really boo him and saying the right thing uh, that I was just kind of in all of this kid doing that at this level, at a brewery in Greenville, South Carolina, just getting the same pop and kick out of the audience that I would see The Rock or Stone Cold or whoever. You know, here we are, I make five minute docs. I love telling a five minute story. And I reached out to him and I said, hey man, I really enjoyed the show last night um, and your athleticism. Uh, I'd love to just shoot a five minute documentary on you for my YouTube channel. And he responded and sound, he was like, that sounds great. And I thought, oh, awesome, this is easy. So I met up with him in Columbia, South Carolina at an event and filmed with him there. I filmed with him the next night in North Carolina where I met his tag team partner, Chance. I watched those two wrestle and how they work as a tag team. And I thought, oh no, this is not five minutes. This is a full on documentary about him about the people of this, what they put themselves through, trying to get to the next level, coming up with their own characters, coming up with their own fight, scheduling, marketing themselves. They have a, a faction called the Kingsgate, which is Patrick, Chance, Donnie, and Mason. And they decided like, hey, if we can, you know, wrestle together, know each other, practice, be as good as we possibly can be, we up our chances of getting hired at all these shows. And they did that and they do it successfully. And watching them try to make it to the next level in their own way, in their own time was just fascinating. And meeting all the people 
uh, I, I spent a year on the road with them driving up and down the East Coast from, you know, Georgia to Vermont and put together an hour and a half documentary that I just finished up about a month ago and have someone, a distributor that wants to purchase it from me. So I, what I'm showing you today is the trailer for that. I find myself most comfortable just turning my own self up by like a lot. Yeah! This is not over! People can just do this. You can just sign up and just do it. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, chance rise of Patrick Scott, the reality is I knew that indies existed, I knew that, you know, TNA was a thing, but how do I do this? That's for me, they're cheering for me. You're welcome, they make this. <laughs> We're independent contractors, putting your business out there, you know, you're hanging the signs on the thing with your number on it. Welcome back to the King's Gate Show! So the King's Gate is just a collaboration between four Carolina wrestlers, you know, wanted to be utilized more in the companies that we were working for. Hey, can you shut up? The heels always have a bigger following than the baby faces do. People really hate me. To me, it's funny because I know that's a different side of it. It's a very jam-packed schedule. Almost every weekend is full. Last night went really well, and we are now only three hours away from home. I will say that the people that are still around from the 80s and 90s and are still into wrestling today, they have evolved with the business. There's a lot of good stuff that old school guys can still teach new school guys, but there's a lot of new stuff out there that's just as good and amazing. He's got this, he knows what to do. He's learned and he's built up his body too. Like he exercises all the time. So he's prepared for what's coming. Well, there's a reason they call them high risk maneuvers. Just coughed up a little bit of blood and I'm trying to decide if that's good or not. So I would say his mental well being is definitely impacted by wrestling. I'm almost certain that every single wrestler's mental well being is. It is a business that can just like tear you down. I look in the mirror and I see that twig kid looking right back at me. I will give you every single bit of classes Mason Miles that I have. It can't all be a character. The line has to blur, you know. When you're in front of a TV, people see you around the world. Sure, a contract would give me more money. Duh. Everybody wants that contract. But there's nothing worth more than giving someone else their money's worth. You don't know what's next for you. I mean, you just literally just live this life until you decide you don't want to anymore. Whoa, what is this, Beyond the Mat? No, thank you. Hey, my boy. Give it. Oh. The problem I'm running into is the distributor wants it. They'll buy it off me right now. I'll call them right now and they'll buy it for me. But th what they want to buy it for and the connections they have aren't as good as what I think they should be. Now, I filmed this on my own. I think it looks great. I think it looks really good. I think it's a really good story. I think these guys are awesome. I didn't have a full budget. I didn't have a production crew. It's not going to look as good as you know, a produced Netflix documentary. But it's, it looks as good as an Amazon documentary that they bought or something that someone would purchase from Hulu. Now, if Hulu produced it or Amazon produced it, obviously. So I'm not, like, delusional. I know it looks good. I know it doesn't look perfect. I know it doesn't look Netflix quality. But I believe in it. I believe in the story, and I believe people will be entertained by it and so I'm having a hard time giving it over to a distributor that I don't really think will push it to the best of their ability because I've gotten the feeling that they're just trying to buy as many things as possible for cheap, throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Everybody's got their own agenda of, you know, we want to get more deals with airlines so that it'll play in airlines. And more deals with uh, small streaming networks. And I'm like, I really want to shoot for the moon here. If it doesn't hit Netflix, great. I think it can land on Amazon. But I want to at least try. And I feel like these guys are just trying to 
get something up and going. And I think that if it lands on YouTube, it'll hit a wider audience than if it, you know, lands on an airline on Delta for you to pick through the menu. So that's my dilemma. Um, do I give it over to them, take a small chunk of cash that won't even recover what I spent on it, but be able to say, hey, I've sold a documentary. You know, it's in a distributor's hand. It airs on this whatever. Or do I just want to release it on YouTube for all of you guys where I'd still make money off YouTube ad revenue, but it would potentially be seen by the wrestling community and everybody that loves wrestling and not just people that fly Delta or American or, you know, it's on, you know, like the depths of Tubi or something. So that's kind of where I am with it. Uh, and it's such a, it's also just such a big part of who I am and where I came from. It's full circle. It's why I'm a documentary filmmaker today is because I loved wrestling as a kid and I was wrestling in, you know, my best friend's uh, basement with my younger brother. Uh, it has so much meaning to me that I'm just not okay with letting it go for nothing. Um, but maybe I should be. Maybe it's my calling card to get to the next thing. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, because I'm starting to lean towards just putting it up on YouTube. Uh, but I, I, I'm also thinking about these guys and their story. And I want people to see their story and know what they go through. And what they're putting themselves through. To make it to the next level. I've, I have kids, 26 year old kids saying if I don't make it this year I have to retire because I've been in the business for 10 years. Wrestling is a crazy, crazy sport. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy this. Thank you and I will see you guys next week.